The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Okay, I want to talk to you about something that I'm sure you've been a part of, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Swingers clubs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, of course. Swingers Girl clubs. Girl from Animal Golf Club, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, there's many operating around Perth. There is, actually. And I'm of the mindset of each to their own. Yes. Um, but if I was in a boat, it would not float it. Um, mm. I just think that it's... Well, you don't want to sleep people with somebody to, no, um, let alone a stranger. People do it to test <laughs> being naked by myself is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Nat made a point just a second ago that... Um, Swingers clubs are full of the sort of people that you don't want to have sex with. No, 100%. <laughs> wow. 100%. Well, wow, if you are thinking that, Nat, then have I got a place for you. <laughs> the Q's Monkey Club in Melbourne. Right? Okay. They're said to be Australia's most ex- exclusive um, and they have relaunched um, with new restrictions and new rules. Right, this is a COVID thing, but anyway, tell me the restrictions. No, 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 believe me, there's no, there's no <laughs> the six foot distance. Six foot distance. <laughs> Here, so these are the new rules. Um, they must be, you must be aged. Oh, you can't go. Well, it must be aged between 21 and 35. Oh, that's hurtful. It's not a Contiki tour. That's Settle really down. That's mean, isn't it? <laughs> what? Like, so ageist. That is that's so terrible. Mean. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take that up no with the committee. no one wants to go to the old Swingers Club. <laughs> <laughs> you don't skin. want to go to the old one where there are ball bags dragging on the floor. <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh, anyway. Yeah, but there are people that own their own homes. So there's, there, there's, there's, <laughs> you're right, Natalie. There is security in the person that's ploughing you. Um, uh, so anyway... For women, so 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 you have to send in a photo and you will be screened. Right, so, right, I mean, right. So that makes some sense because you don't want a monster in there. No. Um, for women, you must be within the eight to twelve size range. Oh wow! And you must be between twenty one and thirty five years old, of course. Um, both. This is my favourite bit. Both men and women are asked to submit photos with strict instructions that allow <laughs> that that outlaw no sunglasses. Right, yeah. I'm guessing it's, you know, like some people are, some people must be really ugly in the eyes. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. It's true. Or maybe that's where you show, that's where you show your age, maybe. Or or your creepiness. Or your creepiness. Mm, Yeah, you're mm, intense. I'm going to murder you, stare, mm. after we do it. Okay. There's Um, one. This is the best one. Um, There is no sucking in your guts. (laughs) (laughs) I think we're all in trouble there. You're not allowed to suck your guts in. I don't care if you've got the hottest physique on the planet. If you're naked in front of a room of people, you're sucking in your guts. (laughs) Even if you don't have one. <laughs> right, right. So they're saying that it's got beautiful furniture from France yes, and stuff like that. Yes, but it also has no members. Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful furniture from around the world, including France. I mean, of course, it's all been scotch guarded to a <laughs> yeah, an instrument yes, life. Yeah, covered in plastic. Um, and they're saying that um, it's not really... R- there's a few rooms here and there, but it's just mainly an open gaming floor for play. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh. no, yeah. no one's joining that. Hey, remember last no time? There was that. years and years ago that we were talking about swings. It might have been a decade ago. Yeah. And we got calls left, right and centre of people telling us how they they're involved in them it. here. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you know what? If that is what you like to do, you go for gold. Mm. You but, go for gold. But that's a young club, isn't it? Well, it's like, also, why is there a size limit on the girls but not on the guys? Yeah. Oh, I agree with that. That's now. outrageous. That's, yeah, that's outrageous. Yeah, if you're sure. going to say they have to be yeah. between 8 and 12, then yeah. why, why don't the guys have yeah. to... But then again, sit. girls get in cheaper. They're only... <laughs> eight, it's, it's, uh, I think it's $100 for men and it's um, $80 or, or $70 or something. That's not women. enough of a discount. And $150 for a <laughs> couple. Each time. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh. Well, how much did you think it would be? How much what, did you what, think the on, entry? Wait, what, what, what are you, what, you what, prepared to pay? I thought the entry was... Well, I, I didn't. What do you think? It was an entry price. No, okay. So, okay. So, so, what would you, what would you, what would you be what would you be willing? What would you be willing to spend <laughs> to get oh, in there? Remember, what is it, what is it worth? What's yeah. it worth for yeah. me to enter this place? Yeah. Literally. Do you get a drink on arrival or something? <laughs> That's a great call because when I went to the uh, <laughs> sex show in Amsterdam, <laughs> I got two Heinekens and entry for twenty five dollars. You want to have entry into two that was Heinekens? A long time ago, <laughs> Sean, how long ago was that? <laughs> that was 20 years ago. 20 years ago. God love So him. what are you thinking, 30 bucks? I think 30 bucks. That's <laughs> doable. Do you think? Well, it's 30 doable. bucks, you're going into Is it the... nibbles? You're, you're going into the <laughs> older swingers club where you can breathe out. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. It is finale week for Survivor Australia. Uh, 7.30 on Channel 10 Sunday and then Monday night as well. And the final four mm. has been decided. And WA's own Liz 
is one of the final four. She joins Liz, us now. Liz, morning. Liz. Good morning. I'm um, super proud you're from WA because yes. you're doing a really good job on the show. Thank you. Um, and I have to tell everyone, she's the cleanest smelling person yes. that we've ever had in the studio. She really clean. has. Which I've said to Liz, obviously hides the dirty stuff she does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but I bet you didn't smell that good when you're in Samoa, right? Oh my God, no. <laughs> Do people stink? Awful. Or is um, there beach? Is there like you're washing yourself constantly in the water, seawater? Yeah, we're constantly in the ocean, and then because we've got the campfire going all the time, everyone just smells like smoke. smoke. Yeah, oh, that's okay. So it's good. It masks yeah. the yeah. bo. Yeah. I want to know why were you? You were originally a villain. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Um, because I'm a sassy queen and I think I just say it how it is and sometimes that can come across as like rude or abrupt but I'm quite opinionated and I'm not afraid to just say it how it is and mm. so I think having that kind of confident personality I was cast as a villain. But but I've known of you mm. but never with anything villainous. No. Attached no, to you. Like so when you're a villain, champion, I was like, why is she a villain? <laughs> yeah, well, I understand the beauty queen that apparently pushed someone down the stairs. <laughs> Although she made that up. <laughs> but, yes. she made that up. Yeah, but I understand yeah. there's a story attached to people. There's always nothing with you. So And you're really lovely. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah well, I haven't were been we to just, jail or anything. Were we so vilifying <laughs> Russians? Is that yeah, what it was about? I, was maybe. It a, maybe. I don't know. That's the only you. reason that I could think of. Liz, it was good to see at times, and you still do it when you're under pressure or you're getting angry and you start speaking in Russian, you're teeing off on everyone or you Self. Well, I think I just went into like my little zone yeah. where I was just like pep talking myself, and I tend to do that sometimes. I speak to myself in Russian, and then obviously with George at Tribal Council, he's Macedonian, so yep. it's quite similar. So we'd often kind of cryptically speak to each other, how awesome. so others wouldn't hear us. Hey, I got a question right about the camera crews. All right, so the other night, um, I think Simon and someone was in exile, and they were having a conversation, and George had gotten on his stomach and he crawled yes. over there to watch from the bush. How can they not see the camera that is pointing at George? Talk to me. Um, Because it's all in the dark. And so that, like, night vision, it's not a flashlight or anything. Like, they're fully blacked out. The camera is dark. And it's so noisy from the wind and the trees and the palm trees. that, And the ocean's right there. So you can't hear anything. Another question about the camera. So you're out looking for an idol, right? Mm. Okay, and then so say there's Liz in the jungle looking for an idol, and then next minute um, you walk away, and then straight away the cameraman sending you and points straight where the idol was. Don't you guys notice that the cameraman's gone straight down to where the idol is? <laughs> point, to be though. honest, no. I think there are cameras all the time. Like okay. there's yes. so many everywhere, yes. and like someone's run off this way, someone's yeah. run off that way, and yeah. like. You're so stressed in that moment looking. You're scared someone else is going to see you. So it's quite frantic and frazzled and you don't actually... You forget the cameras are there. Yeah. So they're just part of the, but the yeah. background. But with my yeah. strategy on being a survivor, I would yes. go in there to watch the cameras, yeah. watch where they're... But maybe you you, you we're watching it, but yeah. maybe the, that, that camera shot was done... No, 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 no. I'm talking about it'll be, say, say Liz is there, right? It'll be Liz, and then the camera will go from Liz down to where the, literally pan mm. down to where the idol is. But they might no, do they that might every time, that time that yeah. and in any yeah. crook of wood, and they we only see the one. That takes 10 seconds yeah. to go and check. Well, Liz, the last um, trouble cancer we've seen that your good friend Nina, she, oh, well, Nina's gone, mm-hmm. and you were voting for Matt to try to get him out. Mm. When it gets that. I mean, this has been happening all the way through. When you're getting, like, double-crossed time after time, don't you want to it's just exhausting. go down and start throwing hay- haymakers <laughs> at the end of it? It is exhausting. Um... It's funny, I was speaking to my partner because we watched it together and he was like, I don't know how someone hasn't gotten into a fight yet. Yeah, I would have sure. been swinging by now. And oh, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I couldn't be. To be that. honest, yeah, it is frustrating when you're like, we are doing this yeah. and they say yes and then they panic and it's just like, bro, like, come yeah. on. Now you've thrown me under the bus and now I have to like, literally now I'm in the shit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's challenging. It's really hard because it's constantly a balance between like, you said you're going to do yeah. this, but yes. you're really going to do what's best for you, yeah. and that doesn't align with what's best for me. Yeah. So it's just like this constant. So that you, you can't trust anyone. I tell no, you. No, absolutely not. I tell you but what. Do you buy the world of 
you know, because you come in with a plan sometimes, and what's said at trial will cancel, then you go, oh, God, maybe I need... Do you... Yes. So is that, a, mind, is yeah. that a proper defence? Yeah, like, like there's been times we've gone in with a plan and then someone has said something that's just kind of, like, triggered me yeah. and I'm like, mm. hang on, something's, plan something's going on, <laughs> we need to flip the script. So yeah. you're always on your toes. And, like, at Tribal, you have to really be listening to what people are saying because they're dropping hints about, like, how they feel yeah. and what they want to do moving forward. And so you need to be really fluid and I mean by that time I'm sitting there going far out I'm about to fall asleep yeah. like yeah. I'm exhausted but you still have to be so switched on like it's just wild. As a viewer watching George who is amazing mm. I, I think he's probably, an amazing probably one player. of the best mm. in the world right but as a viewer being so frustrated screaming get rid of George why isn't anyone getting rid of George and it uh, and the only thing I could think of, I was thinking about it last night, are you guys so exhausted that it's actually quite good for someone else to be taking the reins and you be on their side because you can't be bothered doing it yourself and you're going to ride that for as long as you can? Is that what it is? I mean, partly, yes. The way George has been, like, edited is, like, he wasn't like that to me out there, if yes. that makes yeah, sense. Sure. Like, as intense. As intense. And obviously there's a lot of stuff happening behind my back that I'm not aware of yeah. that George is kind of stirring. And so to me, he was quite chill and casual and we were mates. Yeah. But I think another factor is, like, George is a huge threat. So you want him there to a certain degree to hide behind him up yes. to a certain point. Because if it comes down to a choice between yeah. you and him, you've got a much better shot at it. But no one's chosen him. But he's backstabbed everyone. That hasn't yeah. worked, though. Nobody has gone for George. Like, like, I think there was one or two No, one I'm talking about attempts. at the end. I'm talking yeah, yeah, about no. the end. But at the, yeah. no, but at the end, though, jo that, uh, no matter how, if anyone's been betrayed on Survivor, they choose the person that's put out the will. best mm. moves. The end. Not always, but yes. Yes, yeah, so yeah, 90% people, some of the time. Some people play it that way, yes. but not everyone. Because, Liz, you were talking about getting rid of Matt for the reasons why he'll be your biggest challenge if you get to yes. the end. So yeah. George isn't your biggest challenge in that circumstances. No. So yeah. you think, oh, I'll be able to beat yeah. him in a But in what a about challenge. vengeance? Because he obviously voted out your bestie. He he orchestrated I Shawnee's know. departure and, you know, the, we were all about the She's Alliance and he like literally backstabbed you and her and did you not want to get vengeance? Because he's a pretty venge vengeful player. I did and it's definitely still something that's on my mind <laughs> yeah. at this point. In or anything like that? Yeah, look, George, George is a peculiar man but we love him. Um... <laughs> Vengeance, yes. We're just going to have to s wait and see what happens. Yeah, okay. I mean, everything in Survivor is timing. So, yes. like, you just got to strike when the iron's hot and you got to hit it correctly, otherwise you're screwed. So yeah. Yeah. we've only got a little bit of time left. I guess we'll see what happens. But I feel like, you know, I have used George to my advantage. Yeah. I've learnt a lot from yeah. him. And it was an organic friendship where we just kind of got along yeah. and loved the guy. So and it wasn't a strategic move from you to oh, hitch yourself to Oh, absolutely not. His... Like, I went on the show and I was like, you know what? I'll be lucky to last a week. Like, I'm a glamour <laughs> puss. Like, I'm not built for this climate. Yeah. And then I just kind of, like, made friends with the right people. It was just natural. Yeah. And yeah. I learnt from Shawnee, who was yeah. one of the best players. And yeah. then I learnt from George, who is the best player ever, I'd say. And so... It's just kind of I picked up all these skills along the way and now I'm just like their love child yes. who's like... Just going. Yeah, it's right. still there. It's been an honour to have you in. You've been such a great player, but also um, to have one of um, Perth's newest A-list power, 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 power couples. Oh, for God's sake. Power yeah. couple. It's happening. <laughs> yeah. Is it? How many people, are you, <laughs> how many how people, many people hit, said that? How many people hit you up for street extras? Um, a few, actually, <laughs> but more so from Survivor because I tactically wore a few pieces. Yes. Ah, yes. very yes. nice. So, you know, that subconscious marketing really comes coming through. <laughs> um, but the power couple stuff is just ridiculous. Like, Perth's newest. And newest. I'm like, yeah. guys, we've been together for five and a half I years. Say, it's, yeah. hardly, <laughs> it's hardly happened overnight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but any more attention and spotlight, I'll take it. Yeah, why, not? Go, why not? Why not? Why um, not? Sunday and Monday night, it's finale week for Survivor, 7.30 on Channel 10. Liz, thank you so much for coming in. You're Thanks, a joy. Man. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast.
when we're away on holidays, we love to live our best lives mm. and do extreme things that you probably would never mm. do in your own country. 100%. Yeah. And you always wonder how it's all going to end, but you're getting caught up in the excitement. Yeah, well, wouldn't you right. be there? You're yeah. over in New Zealand. Yeah. Let's have a crack of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm um, in Australia. I mean, I'm guessing that we have one of the highest safety standards. Um, and when you go overseas, mm. you probably just automatically assume that everyone does. And sometimes equipment isn't checked. And this is what happened in Pattaya. In Thailand, um, is in February, a, uh, a guy um, and his friend decided to go bungee jumping. Now, in- I've n- I- I've done the bungee swing. I've never done the bungee jump. Yeah. I've never actually done the bounce. Yeah, have you done it? No, I haven't. We were at a, a nightclub in Bali that used to have one. And um, the, <laughs> and the <laughs> nightclub <laughs> in Bali that had wrong. one is what you do not do. We had this whole thing of drinking games and the joint was going bananas and everyone's going crazy. And then the guys, my former teammates, went, oh, this is a good idea. And they started doing it. Anyway, did I didn't not. do it. They survived. There was a couple of them. Yeah, but, like, they shouldn't have. I know. That, of course they shouldn't That's have. just such an ill-conceived no notion. So everybody who's Bali. going bungee called, jumping is yeah. very drunk. Oh, no. It was yeah. called, it's God, called Gadu Gadu, and now it's a restaurant. Imagine yeah. the vomit underneath. Yes. <laughs> just, oh, do not want to oh, sit anywhere near oh, that. You would have just come straight out of you. Terrible idea. Um, so a, na- a man named Mike, um, he was very excited for um, uh, him and his friend to do this. He just watched his friend make a successful jump um, from a crane platform that was 10 storeys oh, high. Oh, yeah. crane. Yep. The staff then tied the bungee cord to Mike's feet mm-hmm. and he was ushered towards the edge. Um, nothing could have prepared him for what happened next. Mike flew out his arms. Yeah. Yes. And stretched it, you know. Yeah, waiting, the world. waiting for the bounce. Um, uh, the uh, the rope outstretched for 30 metres um, before the uh, rope attached to his ankle snapped about <laughs> five kilometres above the lake. This is... Um, five some, metres, I take so, it, not so, five so, kilometres. Sorry, sorry, five <laughs> metres above the lake. This is, um, this is what happened. <laughs> Right into the drink. Whoa, how's the Lucky ending there? Lucky he was going into water. Yeah. Like because you're, yeah. Cause you're, cause you're not um, planning to enter the water, so you're no. not going into a dive. You're a lot more like, hey, because yeah. hey, you're going to oh, bounce back God, up. Oh, like yeah. belly yeah. flop of sorts. Um, so anyway, um, he wasn't well afterwards. No, I wouldn't have thought so. But he survived, yeah. which yeah. is Oh, good. he survived. He was rushed to hospital, um, and he's okay now. He suffered um, severe bruising, swelling around his left eye. Um, he developed a lung infection. So that's from the, the dirty water, water. Yeah, yeah. So he had to get MRIs and X-rays and all that sort of stuff. So he was pretty sick. But the, the, the thing that got me about this was he lost an entire layer of skin under his armpit. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Ouch. Yes. Ouch. What is that like? You have to what walk a, around with what your arms. What a horrible out. injury. <laughs> Can't put you over and doing the I'm a little teapot. <laughs> for however that long just... it takes for skin to grow back. And then it may, if it scabs as well, yeah. like you've got this crusty scab on yeah. Oh, it becomes like, itchy, yeah. How long does it take for skin to... Oh, okay. oh Siri. Siri. Maybe Siri was going to tell you the answer. Get your own show. <laughs> um, uh, how long does it take for skin to grow back? I mean, it depends where it is. So you need a good blood supply. Yeah. So, if so do you have got good blood under yeah, your arm? Yeah, it wouldn't yeah, be too would bad. Be. Wouldn't so be too com- 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 nice stuff. I would think that it would be. It would start to be able to function properly mm. after a week and a half, probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, but I mean, it depends. If they have to skin graft it, then it's a whole. That's a whole different story. Oh my but gosh. yeah, if you just if it's just um, yeah. enough that they like a severe graze kind yeah. of thing that's been stripped off. Yeah, you'd think after. I, look. I don't know if you guys know this, but skin, it's pretty important. (laughs) It keeps the stuff that's inside us in. Right. You know what I mean? And stops things things from (laughs) that outside from getting in. Yes, and stops things from inside getting out. Mm. Skin. It's great. It's full on. We're all for for it. We're all for skin being on you. It's our largest uh, organ. organ. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for telling us. Well, I was saying, oh, but then again, then that again, people like Aaron Sandlands is not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of skin I can uh, assure you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to know because we're big supporters of skin and always yeah, have very been. Very pro skin. We want to know what happens when your skin came off. Oh, all right. Did you lose yeah. a decent bit of skin? Yeah, yeah. 
Skinless. Skin free, they say. Skinless in Seattle. (laughs) We're going to give somebody um, three sessions at Stadium Carts for you and a friend. Now you might think you might lose skin here. It's very safe. Oh, so safe. It's so much fun. Even somebody who drives like an idiot like Sean, it still wasn't enough to get in the wind. I I, like ram Sam into a wall and Mm. Sam is here right now. That had nothing to do with the cars. (laughs) 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 Oh, that's not the topic you're doing, are (laughs) they? Last Saturday night. Okay, sorry. Um... Stadium Carts at Optus Stadium is extending its season for the April school holidays. You can book now at stadiumcarts.com.au. It is such a good time. All right, tell us how you lost your skin. We personally like skin on our bodies. Yes. Um, Except Chris, for some of our sausages. Do you like the Chev-Ups? I do love a Chev-Up. I yeah. never buy a Chev-Up, though. Um, no, I know. I never go and buy Chev-Ups. But every time I'm at the shops, I go, God, I should buy some Chev-Ups. And if somebody Skinless feeds sausage. you a Chev-Up, you're fine with it. I've never yeah. had anyone feed me a Chev-Up. <laughs> I bet you have. Um, Chris is in Baldarvis. Good morning, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Hey, Chris. Now, have you lost a bit of skin? Yeah. um, So when I was uh, very young, uh, I was playing on a play equipment and I was climbing across a flying fox type swing thing. And someone came across it and ran over my hand. Oh, oh sure. Now, uh, what actually, you know that bit, that bit of skin between your thumb and your, your finger? Yes. yes. He, he essentially just cut that in half. Oh. And, um, so, and the weird thing for me as a kid, I have a vivid memory of it, was yeah. there was no blood. I yeah. could just see muscle and tissue. Yes. And oh. it, was, it, was all, it was all blue and white, so I could see all the insides of my hand. What a great I lesson could, in could, anatomy. So, Chris, yeah, once oh, it yeah. cut, you cut that kind of webbing, it just peeled back like a banana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it, it pretty much, yeah, I could see my whole hand. Can I tell you, um, you know you've severely hurt yourself when your body's refusing to bleed. <laughs> 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 or you might have, the blood's like, oh, no, this is too much. Uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> I'm not going near it. Full on, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> how many stitches to repair that, Chris? Uh, I think it was 16. Yeah. I, pretty much, yeah, and uh, I couldn't use my hand for a month. Yeah. Oh, How old were you? Yeah, sure. Sean, Sean, Sean. How old were you? He was young enough that he was playing on play equipment. Yeah, yeah. But gosh, you shouldn't be able to see the things that Chris can do with his feet now. Also, Sean, he's, got two, he's got two hands. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, thanks, Chris. Let's go to Hayden and Calm Scott. Hey, Hayden. Hey, team. How you going? Yeah, good, good buddy. Hayden. All right, we're talking about losing skin, Hayden. Yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, I had a bad dirt bike accident where the foot peg uh, went through my boot and took a nice uh, chunk out of my shin. Oh. So uh, because I lost the I lost the tissue, I actually had to get a skin graft taken from my upper thigh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then slapped on, but I had to wear a uh, it was like a vacuum a vacuum bandage like for quite some time to actually rebuild that tissue that was lost yes. before I had the skin graft put on. Yeah, right. So what's like a vacuum ba- bandage like? Is that, you know, you know that those plastic things you put your jumpers in for winter and then you put the vacuum in there and you, and you suck all the air out? Is that what it's like? Uh, uh, in a way, it's sort of like wearing a, wearing a little vacuum handbag that was attached to your shin for six weeks. <laughs> a vacuum handbag I've never See? heard before. I love you. There's you know, like a market. vacuum handbag. Like, what the hell's a vacuum handbag? <laughs> Hayden, 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 so when you've had a skin graft, can you tell that you've had a skin graft now? Yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm quite, uh, quite a hairy man. So, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, there's actually a, a, a decent spot on my shin that's just, just bald now, so... How much did that hurt and how long did it, you're in pain for, Hayden? I mean, the accident itself, right, once yes. you realise, like, that's pretty full on, but it's later where the pain sets in, isn't it? Uh, to be honest, like, I was, like, the adrenaline was, was sort of lasted for a fair while because uh, I had to get uh, carted to the hospital in the back of a uh, Land Cruiser to Armadale Hospital, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, by the time all that stuff happened... Like it, it, the the pain wasn't really there; it was more numbness. Oh, oh! That's so, empty. Hayden, what's what is the bit where they took the skin from feel like, and how long does that take to heal? Uh, so, normally they actually said to me it was actually a split skin graft. So, what they do with that is uh, instead of a full depth skin graft, it's yeah. only half. Yeah. But then they actually put it through like a. Like a pasta roller, so to speak, and then oh. spread it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh. okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, it kind then, of, yeah. Yeah, then they then they slap that on. So I've got, like, when you look close enough to it, it's got, like, all these little holes in it. Yes. Oh. That have, like, scarred up. So, yeah, it looks looks uh, 
looks quite gnarly, but... I just oh, yeah, like, I just just like though, exactly. I just yeah. like that they took it from your thigh and not like your bum, because imagine they have, like, bum hair growing out of your shin. But, like, now you don't have any hair there. That's actually really great. It would be good for <laughs> good for girls. Are, did, are you conscious of your receding shin line? <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, nah, they, they tend not to look their first, so... Oh, OK, that's weird. Of course, Hayden, that makes sense. Thanks, mate. We want to know, how did you lose some skin? God, I love these stories. And where from? Ugh. Three sessions at Stadium Cars for you and a friend is up for grabs, and this is a prize worth winning. G'day, Dino. Oh, hey, guys, how you doing? Wonderful. Oh, bloody good, Dino. Talk to us about good, your Good, good. Will you... You might not be after this one. (laughs) (laughs) You know how you see things and you can't unsee them? Yes. Well, you guys did that for me this morning and it's just brought it all back. (laughs) (laughs) Righto. Hit us with it, Dean. So we're out out doing bulk rubbish collection and with the big trucks that you're loaded into and the bobcats that pick everything up have got a big claw bucket on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're working with this guy and we told him all morning, don't put your hand anywhere near the bobcat when it's about to crush something, you know. So anyway, we're about to pick up this big blue couch and (laughs) he stuck his hand in there to push the couch up a bit just as the claw bucket's closing. And I'm standing right next to him and as I'm saying no, he's put his hand in there and the claw bucket's ripped off. He's, it's degloved two of his oh, fingers. No we knew we, someone was going to say degloving no in this. In this we were hoping. <laughs> yeah. And so you know what um, Frankfurts look like when you leave them in the water for two. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, they're, so they're split. They and, they're um, wrinkly. Yeah, yeah. And it's bit yeah, dumb. yeah. And it's like that, but pulled back all the way to the fingernail oh. with just a bone. Oh. And it was oh. Oh, it was hideous to look at. So <laughs> no. I just ripped I just ripped my shirt off and wrapped it round his Good hand. Idea. Only because yep. you didn't want to look at it. <laughs> no, <not really. laughs> and I was like, well, why do I have to be the first responder? Yes. <laughs> Keep the shirt. <laughs> so what happened after that, Dino? Nah. Sorry? What happened after that? You wrapped the shirt around his hand and then, what, you zing him off to hospital or something? Oh, well, then he started shaking like a wet yeah. dog, you know, and... <laughs> So yeah, we bundled him up and he's sort of fallen into my arms a bit and oh. not realising what's happening, you yeah. know, like the last guy yeah. just gone numb. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we bundle him up into the boss's car and off to hospital you go and, um, yeah, tried and sewed him back together and, um, what do they call it, microsurgery yeah. and that. Yeah. I'm just wondering, though, if... It's hectic. Like, I wonder if when you have been degloved, do you feel like re-gloving yourself? Yes. I just... I just go, and hoping again. for the best, pulling it back on. <laughs> <laughs> really and then just, like, it down and then just like patting it. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, we go. Oh, like putting back a glove back Gino, on. Gino, thank you so much for that very graphic description. <laughs> just as everyone's having breakfast. Awesome. Um, we're going to go to Franco in Port Kennedy to finish off. Morning, Franco. Hey guys, how are you? Uh, you What have you got for us? Uh, Look, it was a while ago, I was probably nine or eleven or something like that. We were holidaying up with Sunday Islands. Yeah. Uh, So we were doing the island sort of tour and went to a place called South Mole Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they've got like the, um, uh, like the middle of the resort is the pool with one of those little half sort of pipe uh, slides, the curly one. Yeah. Yeah. So I was quite excited as a kid. So. It was in the morning, and uh, I ripped off the shirt, and I climbed up the top of the slide, and I dove onto the uh, slide on my, on my stomach. Yes. But I hadn't realised that no one else had been using it. It's only been there, and it was dry. It was a dry slide. <laughs> and then gravity so took over. Yeah. yeah. And I have sort of, I couldn't stop, and I just put it down, and I stopped right at the very end, and I, and I peeled myself off, then rolled into the pool, uh, and then the chlorine's got me, and I got off from my belly button up over my chest. It's just red and, oh. like, you know, like a big rash. Yeah, no, we rash. know. Yes. And uh, I was crying, obviously, went to mum, and we were camping, so we had to spend another week up at Ellie Facebook for the next <laughs> month. I had this scab from my, from my belly button up to my chest. It was like a scab vest, I suppose. <laughs> a scab vest. I, 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 
I just peeled off over the course of a month, but it was... Um, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm, I'm picturing that moment when you've <laughs> come off the slide and you've gone into the <laughs> chlorine. Yes. 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 No, you know what? Thank God it wasn't salt water. water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sort of stopped at the end, had to peel myself oh. off, oh. rolled into the pool, which I thought would help. But there, there is a no bleeding in the pool rule, though. Frank, <laughs> I just have to tell you, this hap- this thing happened at the Kalgoorlie Fair, right? You know the big yellow yeah. slide, that one that, you know, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, huge yeah, one? Yeah. Yep. So yeah. it was boiling hot that day. Day and there were burn yeah. victims everywhere mm. because you get a little <laughs> hessian sack. Yeah. Yep. And then as soon as people's um, skin contacted with the slide on the mm. way down, their skin was melting off. Mm. And there was just melt. It was like Freddy Krueger's just everywhere. It was absolutely... But that, you know what? Yours seems worse. <laughs> <laughs> Great stories from everyone. They yeah. really were quite Crackers. graphic and got us had, had us going. Franco, though, the good humour <laughs> there, mate. Three sessions at Stadium Carts for you and a friend. Stadium Carts at Optus Stadium is extending its season for the April school holidays. Book now at stadiumcarts.com. Beware of dry slides, everybody. Yes. Uh, lesson learned. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.